Over the years, Red Dead Online has grown quite a bit. I still remember the release of Red Dead Online and how players complained how there was nothing to do and there's nothing to buy. Things have changed quite a bit since then. Now there's quite a lot of things to do for new players and there's also loads of different items that you can buy into. The big question is, what are some of the best items you should be buying into? And this is exactly what we're gonna be going through in this video. Before I do get into the video though, if you are someone that is looking into streaming, whether or not you've only just started or you've been doing it for quite some time now, you're definitely going to want to use own.tv. Own.tv will allow you to spice up your stream with premium designs and seamless animations. This is actually something that I used when I first started streaming. So if you are interested in upgrading your overlays, alerts, panels, emotes, badges, transitions, then definitely go into the description down below and you'll be able to find an affiliate link to own.tv also means every time you use that link buy something good for yourself i will also get a 30 percent cut out of it so it also supports the channel and whilst we're on the topic for streaming i do stream over on twitch every monday wednesday and friday and if you miss those there's also a second channel where you can see all the best and funny moments getting back into the video 50 items that you must have within red dead online these are the items that you should have within the game if you don't have them currently then you should definitely be working to get them because they either make your life a a lot easier or they will give you benefits such as earning more money more gold or more xp i will go through each and every item tell you how much it costs and also why you should have it so you also have a reasoning why you're buying into this item rather than me just telling you to buy this item so let's get into things first thing the penance and field shovel the penance and field shovel costs 350 dollars and unlocks the ability to dig up collectibles there are dig sites all over the world of Red Dead Online. They're shown by a disrupted earth and when you use your eagle eye, you can see the location because it has yellow particles. The shovel will now unlock the opportunity for you to be able to dig that up. You'll be able to get some extra family heirlooms and also some extra arrowheads. But this also can be paired up with the next item because the next item is the metal detector which costs $700. The metal detector will locate collectibles that don't have disrupted earth and yellow particles pointing to the exact location. This is collectibles such as arrowheads, jewelry and coins. Whatever you weren't able to collect before the metal detector you are now able to collect now. At number 3 you definitely want to get the bounty wagon and this costs $875. The bounty wagon helps you bring in more bounty targets at the exact same time. If if you're playing as part of a large posse and then you probably don't actually need this the maximum bounties you can bring in at once is six and you can have a posse of up to seven so if you are in a posse you can easily have one person getting one bounty with still one man left over but if you're a solo player then this is essential the two four and six man bounty posters are a bit more difficult you can stow one of the bounties on the back of your horse and lasso another and drag them behind. But as soon as you start getting to four and six, it becomes incredibly difficult. In fact, it becomes impossible. The bounty wagon definitely helps you out with this, bringing in more bounties in at the exact same time, giving you a much higher reward. And number four, we have the bar expansion. This costs $950. Now this doesn't actually offer that much compared to other items on the list, but you will get loads of daily challenges, such as drunken player interactions, serve other players drink your own strong moonshine and you will see these daily challenges regularly these always pop up for me so with this you're going in with money but in the long run you'll be able to pull gold out of it it's the exact same for number five number five is band expansion and this costs 850 dollars this doesn't really offer much compared to other items on the list but this still will give you daily challenges such as play with the band for two minutes or dance with the band for two minutes yet again you're putting money in but you'll be able to get gold out in the long run as long as you complete these daily challenges and number six we have the condenser upgrade which costs 825 dollars this opens opens up average moonshine mash so you can charge more money for every moonshine cell that you do. From this you can even go up to the next one which is the polished copper upgrade and this is number 7 and it costs $875. This opens up strong moonshine mash so you can get the maximum price for moonshine and unfortunately you can't just skip over the previous one which is the condenser upgrade and go straight to the polished copper upgrade. You must get the condenser upgrade first and then buy the polished copper upgrade later. The next item is the wilderness camp. This costs $750. This one is more for efficiency. It makes life so much easier just calling your wilderness camp in instead of calling your main camp, which also costs money, and you'll still need to travel to it. 
The Wilderness Camp also gives you one daily challenge under the Naturalist role, which is cook slash craft seven items at your Wilderness Camp. This is another one that I get every couple of days. So this helps you with efficiency and also you will get some gold back. And number nine, we have the stew pot, which costs $650. You can make your own stew by selecting a recipe and this fills your cause. But the reason that this item is on the list is because of the daily challenges again. Because you can get two different daily challenges such as craft crib superior quality stew and also eat stew, which will give you gold in return. Moving on from this, but sticking with the trader, we have the medium delivery wagon, which costs $500. When first starting a trader, you will only be able to sell 25 goods at a time. But when buying the medium delivery wagon, this increases how many goods you can sell and increases it up to 50 goods at a time. And this also gives you a higher payout because 25 goods will give you $50 for a short distance delivery and $62.50 for a long distance delivery but the medium delivery wagon, which will give you 50 goods, will allow you to sell that for $150 in a short distance delivery and $187.50 in a long distance delivery. Once you get the medium delivery wagon, you can then upgrade this to item number 11, which is the large delivery wagon, which costs $750. Very similar to the medium delivery wagon, this increases how many goods you can sell. With the large one, you can sell 100 goods, which is the max. And 100 goods will sell for $500 with a short short distance delivery or $625 with a long distance delivery. And you must buy the medium delivery wagon before buying the large delivery wagon. Moving on from this, but also still sticking with the wagons, you want to buy the hunting wagon, which is $875. The hunting wagon by itself doesn't give money, doesn't give gold, and it doesn't give XP, but it does make life easier. If you just stick with your horse, you can store animal carcasses, pelts, and other skins on the back. But if you were to disconnect, leave the game, or even just go into a main mission, everything stored in your holes will be completely removed. With the hunting wagon, you can store anything in the back and it's safe. So that means you can leave the game, you can go into missions, you could even be disconnected and you'll be perfectly fine because the second you log back in, all those animal carcasses, those pelts, those materials are in the back of your hunting wagon, saved until you're ready to remove them. On the subject of horses, let's move on to the next couple of items. These items are all rank 20 roll horses. So item number 13 is the Criello, which is the collector rank 20 horse and this costs $950. At number 14, we have the Clad Ruba, which is the Trader Rank 20 horse, which costs $950. At 15, we have the Breton, which is the Bounty Hunter Rank 20 horse. This costs $950. At 16, we have the Norfolk Roadster, which is the Moonshiner Roll Rank 20 horse, which costs $950. And finally, at number 17, we have the Gypsy Cob, which is the Naturalist Rank 20 horse, and this also costs $950. I highly recommend using one of these horses. These horses are the best in the game, and they can make your life so much easier. With any of these horses, once you get to level 4 bonding, you can ride all the way from Tumbleweed going all the way over to Annersburg without losing stamina as long as you occasionally press in L3 to increase the stamina. You can also pair this up with item 18. Item 18 is the Nakadoshas Saddle, which costs $512.50. The Nakadoshas Saddle is by far the best and also most popular saddle within the game. It provides a great benefit within the regen rate, the drain rate, the stamina core drain rate, and also the health core drain rate. This just means your horse will be able to go longer and further without stamina or health completely dying. This partnered up with the rank 20 horses means that you'll just be able to ride constantly. But you can also add even more to this. This brings us on to item 19, hooded stirrups, which costs $144. Applying hooded stirrups to the Nakadosha saddle will increase the max speed and acceleration both by two and also reduces the drain rate by 50%, making a horse that much better. All these items are here for efficiency. You won't be getting money, gold or XP back, but you'll be able to get from point A to point B a lot quicker. Moving on, we have an item which is a bit debatable. At number 20, we have horse insurance, which costs $125. $25. I think that this is worth buying despite all the players that say it isn't. Uninsured horses that die can be healed at the stable but a fee will be required of $4 whereas a horse with horse insurance will be healed automatically. But because you will be charged $4 for every single time that your horse is killed or dies it does mean that horse insurance pays for itself in the long run. If your horse needs to be revived 31 separate times that's when horse insurance becomes profitable for you. And let's be real your horse is definitely going to exceed those 31 times of being revived. At any point you can make a mistake, fall down a cliff, 
or even have a griefer kill it. So horse insurance is actually worth it. And that is why it's on this list. Moving on, we can start looking at some weapons. At 21, we have the Varmint Rifle, which costs $72. This allows you to kill small animals, sedate animals, and also shoot bird eggs out of nests. It actually makes it the most valuable weapon within the game with everything it can do. At 22, we have the Bolt Action Rifle, which costs $216. This allows you to kill medium to large animals whilst maintaining its quality and it's also decent at killing enemies. At 23 we have the Lancaster Repeater which costs $243. This is by far the most popular weapon within the game to kill other players or other NPCs. At 24 we have the Pump Action Shotgun which costs $266.40. This is a new item added to the list for me. I never really used to use it but ever since legendary animals were added to the game this weapon has been great for killing those legendary animals. I know a lot of people use the elephant rifle, which I think Rockstar intended us to use to kill these animals, but the pump action comes out on top. And then moving on to item 25, you have the bow, which costs $124. This is a weapon that can also be used to kill medium animals. You can also get a pamphlet, which is the small game arrow pamphlet, which will help you kill smaller animals. Really, you could probably make the choice of just using the bow, or you can split it up to use the varmint rifle and the bolt action rifle. It is entirely up to you. Moving on from this, we have an activity that isn't as popular as what it used to be. But there is a lot of talks about this coming back within the future. And this is fishing. Even though fishing isn't the most popular activity within the game, it is extremely profitable because of the very little amount of money you have to put in. So item 26 is the fishing rod, which costs $32.50. Item 27, 28, and 29 is the lake lure, the river lure, and the swamp lures, which cost $2.50 cents each. From this you have item 30, 31 and 32 which is the special lake lure, the special river lure and the special swamp lures which you can actually buy from the bait shop within the grass. Then item 33 is the special spinner. All of these items are incredibly cheap and with all of this equipment you can go to any source of water, pull out your fishing rod and fish will spawn in. And when fishing you can reel in fish going from anywhere between 75 cents going all the way up to eight dollars. And that just shows how quickly you can make this money back. Moving on now, we are going to start looking at some pamphlets. These are the pamphlets that I use the most. All of these can make you extremely overpowered or just help you be a bit more efficient. So at 34, we have Express Explosive Pamphlet, which costs $1,000. After this, we have the Incinerary Buckshot Pamphlet, which costs $860. And number 36, we have Explosive Slug Pamphlet, which costs $950. Go into one of the cheapest pamphlets within the game, and we also mentioned it earlier, it is the Small Game Arrow Pamphlet, and this costs $350. This allows you to use the bow on smaller animals without reducing the quality of meat. Sticking with the arrows, you have something a bit more aggressive, and this is item number 38, Dynamite Arrow Pamphlet, which costs $895. We move on to item 39, which is the Fire Arrow Pamphlet at $700. Item 40 takes us away from the arrows and this is Special Horse Reviver which is $475 and finally item 41 is the Special Health Cure which is $595. Any type of ammo pamphlets that I mentioned here with exception for the small game arrow, it is mainly used to fight off other players whenever I get grief or even just to give me a slight edge when going into anything PvP. Special Horse Reviver and Special Health Cures are also very very important. My horse is always killed whether it be a mistake from me or by other players. I always find myself taking damage and needing to go and use health cures, so you can craft them very, very cheaply here. Moving on and also coming towards the end of this video, we have ability cards. These are the ability cards that I use. So item 42 is painted black. Item 43 is focus fire. And number 44, we have winning streak. At 45, we have peak condition. At 46, we have cold blooded. At 47, we have Landon's patience. At 48, we have strange medicine. And at 49, we have eye for an eye. Obviously, you can't equip all of these at once, but you can select four. These are the ones that I use the most, and from what I've researched within the community, these are also some of the most popular ability cards to have. So pick the ones that suit your playstyle. If you're just starting the game, you can get a free ability card in the tutorial. I recommend selecting one of these. You can also get coupons for free ability cards or even discounts for ability cards from the Outlaw Passes as well as Rockstar Rewards. And if you can't get any 
of that and then you will just have to pay $50 to unlock and finally at 50 and this will probably take more time than anything else in this list you want to make sure that the ability cards that you've selected you take them up to tier freeze so this means after buying them for $50 this unlocks it as tier one you will need to grind 10,000 XP and then pay $250 to unlock tier two and then finally you will then need to grind another time to get 15,000 XP and pay $500 to unlock tier three. Unlocking a tier three will give you the biggest benefit compared to tier ones and tier twos. So in addition to just getting four ability cards that suit your playstyle, you also want to upgrade them to tier threes. In total, this will cost you $3,200 to get ability cards from tier one when buying into them and then getting them all the way up to the tier threes that is highly recommended. But anyway, there you go. There are 50 different items that you should be getting within Red Dead Online. These were done in no specific order, but you can easily go through this list, figure out what you have and what you need to buy. If you feel like this list can be expanded on with some extra items, then let me know in the comment section down below. If you are a streamer, whether or not you are someone that has just started streaming or whether or not you've been streaming for quite some time, and you're wanting to upgrade your setup with better overlays, alerts, panels, emotes, badges, transitions, anything like that, then there is a link in the description down below which will take you to owned.tv. It is an affiliate link, so every time you buy something from owned.tv, it will also be helping out the channel here. Whilst on the subject of streaming, if you do want to see me streaming over on Twitch, I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and if you can't catch with those streams, I do have a second channel which is just showing the best moments, all the funny moments, and the links to absolutely everything can be found in the description down below but anyway guys i hope you guys did enjoy if you did enjoy don't forget to leave a like and subscribe but for now i'm going to see you